the good part is that also by distilling something we can feel happy. But anyway, what is distillation? Well, basically, we will distillation is to add heat to some liquid. In this case, will be most of us just let's say add heat to some liquid, make it to evaporate, collect those fumes, and turn it back into liquid. Without that, life wouldn't exist. The cycle of water. The cycle of water is just distillation at its purest form. We have a pot still that you can call it the ocean. It's a pot still. Then we add some heat, sunlight, and then we have some fumes going up. They will get together on top. And then with cooling, with a cooling system, in this case the nature, the cool air, will turn it back into liquid and send it down. The cycle of water. Without that, life wouldn't exist. Well, that is the purest explanation of what distillation is. It is exactly the same. In this case, basically, as we are working not just with pure water, but with different elements, we are playing a little bit with physics and chemistry. We are playing a little bit with the fact that the alcohol boiling point is lower than the water boiling point. The water will, will start boiling at 212 Fahrenheit. The alcohol boils at around 174 Fahrenheit. So by once the fermentation there is over, we have about 6% alcohol in our, our most or in our liquid. So we bring it here and we want to separate the alcohol from the water. So basically we play with the temperature. So we will add temperature in order to be above 174 but below 212. So we will be heating or boiling the alcohol without boiling the water. So basically that's how it works. So at, uh, at the moment of adding uh, temperature, we will have a very high alcohol content in our distillation because the alcohol is the one that will start boiling first. So we have a very high alcohol content. But then as distillation keeps on running, usually our alcohol content comes down because every moment there will be less and less alcohol inside the pot still. And because of, uh, because of a, a, a vacuum system that we are creating inside the, the, the system, inside the pot, also we will be carrying some water. So basically, at the end, we still have liquid, but with little alcohol and too much water. And that's what will help us to balance the amount of alcohol in, in our tequila. So anyway, if the magic is there, I said that the, 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 the beauty is here, again, because this is the source of life, and because by bringing the dead mosto from the fermentation tanks into here, I, I usually feel like it's like bringing a brood a diamond in our hands. Said so a brood diamond, you know that uh, has a lot of impurities. So in order to make a diamond to have value in the market, you have to cut the diamond in precise cuts that will reflect the sunlight or the, the lights, and at the same time to remove all the impurities. If, if the people that produce diamonds, they do that right, then the diamond will have a nice value in the market. But if they leave impurities in the diamond, the diamond will never reach a good value. It is basically the same here. At the moment of fermenting, as I was explaining to you, we have a lot of chemical compounds that are formed or generated right there. Some of them, we want them. Some, we consider them impurities and we need to get rid of those. Basically, we're talking about some superior alcohols, we are talking about methanol, uh, and we are talking about some aldehydes that we don't want to be part of the product. Why not? Oh, because those are toxic. Those our body cannot digest and process them. Those are the responsible for the hangover. The headache next day, feeling bad, that is the methanol and that is the super alcohol. So the difference to be by distilling a good product versus a bad product is how much methanol and super alcohol do you remove from your product. Because maybe to the taste it would be a good tequila, but if it has plenty of methanol and super alcohols, if you drink enough of that, next day you will feel like shit. And then, of course, you will want, want to buy another bottle of that product because it makes you feel terrible. So for a good product, the idea for us is to say, okay, if the people eventually drinks 
or tapatio or tesoro that they should, which is nothing that I'm recommending, but it has happened to me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but to me it has happened. Eventually I have had more than I needed. And the good part, or the, the important part, is that next day you wake up and you feel fine. A little dehydrated because, of course, the alcohol will dehydrate your body, but the ideal is not to have a hangover. And that's basically what we try to do here by removing those impurities. So those impurities will come basically at the first and the last part of destination. We used to call them the heads and the tails of destination. So when destination starts, we have in the heads, we have basically super alcohols. By the way, tequila is the most amazing and the most strange spirit in this world for a lot of reasons, because of the agave, because of a lot of things. But also in destination, with tequila hap happens something that never happened in any other spirit. Usually when you are distilling other spirits, not tequila, the first thing that will come on destination would be methanol. Why? Because it's the one that weighs the less. It has the lightest molecular weight. Then you would have ethanol, and then at the end you would have superior alcohols. They are called superior alcohols because the chain of carbons they have is bigger and therefore they have a bigger molecular weight. Well, with tequila, surprise, we kind of defy all the physics and the chemistry in this world because in this case, the thing that comes on the heads, the first thing to come out of the steel is superior alcohols, the heaviest part. How come? I have no clue. Nobody has a clue. I have had people here with a lot of masters in chemistry and they don't believe it when I tell them until they start looking at it, all the chemical analysis and they realize it is true, it's happening. In this case, the elephant, instead of going forward and having first the, 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 the what do you call it, the nose or the, whatever it is, in this case, the elephant comes backwards. First the <laughs> heaviest part and at the end will come the lightest part. How come? I don't know. But anyway, so we need to remove the head of distillation, the first part of distillation, because it has those super alcohols that, uh, that our body cannot process. Then the middle part, we call it the heart of distillation, or body of distillation, will carry basically ethanol, the alcohol that we can consume, that our body can process, the one that will not make you feel bad next day. So that's the one that we want. And then at the tails of distillation, the last part of distillation, in tequila comes the methanol. In other spirits, it's the first, here is the last. Why? We don't know. Something maybe on the chemical structure of the agave, we don't know what's happening exactly inside the pot still that is kind of pushing the heaviest first and, and holding the lightest ones to the end. Why? I don't know, but basically that's what it is. We have Instead of trying to realize why is that happening, because nobody has been able to give an explanation to that, it's part of the magic of tequila. Uh, we have basically learned to live with it. Okay, we know what comes first, what comes last. We need to remove those parts. So on the first distillation, after removing the heads and the tails, we have something in those tanks that we call it this or this. We call it ordinary. It's something that is not yet tequila. It is about 25% alcohol, so it's about 50 proof, but it still has a lot of impurities, a lot of aldehydes, a lot of metal. And that is the reason why this ordinario, we need to give a second distillation in one of those pot seals and repeat the process. Add heat, remove the heads, remove the tails, and then you remain with the body of distillation. And that's basically what now we may call tequila. So I usually say that making tequila is a very simple step. It's a four-step a four process. Cooking, squeezing, fermenting, distilling. But as you have been in different distillers, you know that those four processes, everybody makes them their own way. And that's why even if there's a thousand brands of tequila in the market, there's no two brands that would taste exactly the same. Because each one has a little thing that is different, even in that simple four-step process, that will make a difference in the final play. So basically, that's what it is. Washington is still one of the best runners. Now, Carlos, I know that 
We have six different stills, mm -hmm. and three of which are different sizes, and then you have one stainless.